Stable Diffusion is a brand new AI art generator that will eventually go open source and become the baseline for generated art moving forward. In this video, we're gonna figure out exactly how good it is. And boy, look at all these artworks. They are incredible. I was lucky enough to get into the beta and I was able to try this out myself and generate a ton of images which you'll see splattered around this video. Just a quick thank you to my Discord community, since one kind hero put a link to this beta in our AI art channel while invites were open, and I snuck in in the last few minutes. I feel very lucky, but if you want to join the Discord, the glib accord, if you will, uh, the link is in the description. Compared to Midjourney, this model is absolutely blowing me away. At the moment, it's another bot generating images inside of Discord, but the fidelity and speed of this model is leaps and bounds better in comparison. To use it, all you have to do is type exclamation point dream and dream up whatever sort of images you want. This is a horror scene of a terrifying monster hiding behind a tree in a dark forest, and boom, that's exactly what it is. Besides the text prompt, there are a couple arguments you can put inside the command to control the image. There are a few that are pretty simple. Let me quickly give you the rundown. Width controls the width of the image. Keep in mind that there is a max of 1024 pixels and it only works in 64 pixel increments. Height works exactly the same way as width does, but for the height of the image. I did make a reference for your aspect ratio options with that 64 pixel limitation, so pause the video and take a screenshot if you need this. Number lets you pick how many images you want to generate with your prompt, and lets you enter any number between 1 and 9. Grid makes those images show up as a single grid, and separate images makes them show up individually. Steps lets you enter a number of steps between 10 and 150, and controls how long the model computes to try to make the image better. This is just like steps in Disco, and a little bit like quality in Midjourney. You can also set the seed to any number, which is just the starting point your image will generate from, so if your seed is the same and you generate the image again, you'll get pretty much the same thing again. Those are the main ones, and we'll get to a few more in a moment, but overall, this bot is pretty simple compared to Midjourney. And the really cool thing is that this is the very baseline model without any fine-tuning, without any censorship or prompt engineering, so when we give it a prompt, the result is exactly what the AI thinks of those words. It's kind of like we have direct access into the brain of these AI art generators. The other thing is that this is the latest form of diffusion, and diffusion is the backbone of so many art generators that have existed online for a while. So when this opens up to the public, that will mean applications like Midjourney and others might start using this for fine-tuning and to improve their own generation. So this being good is good for AI art in general. I think that to be able to directly query and mess with this core algorithm will be great for figuring out how to prompt it and figuring out how to make the best results possible. And I was doing just that and researching for this video when I hit a bit of a roadblock. You see, this model is brand new, and there is not a lot to tell you what certain parameters do, or any tutorials on how to make good prompts. Two of these tags, I had no idea what they did. CFG scale and sampler. Here I was, totally lost, but I think this can be a learning moment. I wanted to narrow in on what these things actually did so that I could tell you for the video. But more importantly than the answer is the lesson on how to figure this out for yourself. I had these cryptic little messages from the Stable Diffusion help command. CFG scale seemed to be a factor that defaults to 7, and sampler seemed to have a bunch of even more cryptic options that I could mess about with. It was at this point when I gave up on finding any further documentation, and I decided to set up a bit of a controlled experiment. 
I generated a few images that were all pretty different in content and style, and took note of their seeds. Here they are. I made a photorealistic portrait, a painted landscape, a render of a car, an anime character concept art, and of course, a dragon. I chose these images because I think they show a big range of the things the AI is able to do, so if these other tags affect one kind of image but not another kind of image, I'll be able to tell exactly what changes. So now that we have images to work from, we can lock the seeds and lock the text prompts so that if we generate these images again, we would get pretty much the same thing. Now, when we change something, that something is the only thing that changes. So if we generate them again, but this time cycle through different sampler options, we can get a feel for how those options affect the results. Take a look at these. It kind of seems like they're maybe a different way to blend and shape the smaller details of the image. Uh, they don't seem to change a lot, but one of them does stand out. It's this PLMS model that seems to be especially good at reimagining photorealistic prompts for much better results. It actually seems to have the biggest effect, and on these three photorealistic images, I like the results a lot more. That K Euler sampler has some of my favorite background blurring, so if you want that artsy bokeh feel, this is probably a good one to choose. And of course, KLMS, which is the default, seems to have the nicest details. I decided that mostly by looking at Emma's Watson's fingers here, and they just seem better than any of the other samplers. We can run the exact same kinds of tests for the CGF scale parameter and see what it does. I chose a range of numbers or factors to test with. I chose 0, 1, 5, 7, which is the default, and then 10 and 50. I wanted to see both the extremes and some probably more reasonable selections. Let's just start looping through them and, and wow, okay. The best way I can describe how this is changing the image is like intensity or post-processing, I guess. I feel like for each of these images, there is a best number and it doesn't seem to be the default. For the cars, it's like five and for the dragon, it's definitely 10. For Princess Leia, I think seven is just about right. For the city, I like to think it's, I think it's like 10 again. Of course, in time, I'll probably get more granular and decide if I like one number for people, another number for paintings, and a third for logos, but for now, I feel like that gives us a pretty good idea of what's happening here. But the point is, you can do these yourself in whatever model you're using. You don't just have to test parameters, but you can test styles, artists, people, and whatever you're interested in understanding about the model. I do want to move on because I promised I would talk about how this AI stacks up against Dolly 2 and Midjourney, and I honestly believe it is a fierce competitor. It handles both photorealistic and artsy concepts really well. It does have some of the same issues as previous versions. Some concepts, namely dog breeds, popular characters, and weather conditions, seem to dominate the scene even if there's a lot of other stuff in the prompts. There seems to be a bias towards making things the model is good at rather than trying to stick to the prompt itself, which is unfortunate. I really like Midjourney because it feels like it's listening to you, to what you say in the prompt, rather than going off on its own little ideas. As you well know, I still don't have access to Dolly 2, but from everything I've seen, and I've seen a lot, I think the main benefit of this model will be its accessibility and its price. It seems like it'll run on weaker machines, run faster, and it lets generation happen on a larger array of content and themes in comparison. I'm honestly so excited for the future of this model. I hear video and 3D environments aren't all that far away, and the company behind this says they dream of an AI-powered VR holodeck. Oh my god, I am so on board, but I won't keep rambling. If you like the video, like the video, and I'll see you in the next one.